archaeologists have made a lot of discoveries about our ancient ancestors recently, and not all of those discoveries make sense. There are still gaping holes in our knowledge about the practices and customs of the people who came before us, and those holes are never more obvious than when we are staring at an artifact or a discovery that we can't comprehend. Check out this collection of mysterious recent discoveries and see what you make of them. In September 2021, archaeologists in China's Sichuan province completed excavation work at the site of six newly discovered sacrificial pits in the Shangjing Duai Bronze Age archaeological site. Among the many puzzling items pulled out of the pits is this artifact, which has been described as a sacred bronze tree. It's thought to have been made by the Shu culture, which existed here about 3,200 years ago. The tree had been smashed to pieces, so recovering the separate branches, flowers, trunk, ornamental birds, and solar wheel ornaments took four months. The job was made harder because the pieces of the tree had been deliberately disturbed between several layers of ivory. The complexity of the piece is astounding, and its significance is unknown. We know practically nothing about the Shu people because they had no written language. We believe that they worshipped the sun, and that the sun was flown into the sky every morning on the back of a bird. So the birds on this bronze tree might be connected to that belief. That's really just guesswork, though. It's a relic of a culture that we don't understand. And so how could we hope to understand their art? Witch hunts belong to a fascinating but shameful period of British history. They happened all over the British Isles in centuries past, and these artifacts tell us much about how they were performed in Scotland. In September 2021, the collection was assembled and put on display to the public for the first time. They include a set of stone charms, said to have been used by a witch to curse her neighbors, and a Gaelic prayer book that belonged to a wizard in the 16th century. Until now, the objects have been hidden in the archives of Aberdeen University. At least 3,800 people were formally accused of witchcraft in Scotland between the 1560s and the 1730s, most of whom were executed after show trials. The prayer book comes with a large key and is a more recent artifact dating to the 19th century. That demonstrates that belief in witches and witchcraft continued here long after the trials stopped. Also in the collection is a 15th century spindle whorl, decorated with feather designs. Feathers were associated with healing charms, but could also be used in curses. Most chilling of all are the collection's jugs, iron collars that were attached to the neck and used to secure alleged witches to walls while they were being held. An American court recently ruled that the Ginnell Stargazer idol can stay in the USA. Now that's been decided, perhaps we can finally get to the bottom of who made it and what it represents. The artifact is approximately 6,000 years old and is one of only 15 Anatolian marble female idols ever to be found. It's thought it was illegally looted from Turkey in 1993 by controversial billionaire Michael Steinhardt. The figure is called a stargazer because of its pose, looking up at the sky with its bulging eyes. It's thought to represent a Chalcolithic era goddess of abundance, but that hasn't been proven. What we do know is that these figurines were usually smashed as part of a prehistoric ceremony, which is why they're usually found in tiny pieces. The fact that this example escaped that fate just adds to the sense of mystery around it. The fact that it's humanoid, but not exactly human-like, has long fascinated UFO enthusiasts. It's unlikely that this ancient work of art has extraterrestrial connections, but we'd love to know its real story. On the Scottish island of Orkney, there's a 5,500-year-old tomb that's slowly falling into the sea. Nothing can be done to save it, so archaeologists face a race against time and nature to discover its secrets. Recently, they found two delicately carved and polished stone balls inside the tomb. They don't know why the balls were made, but they join a collection of around 500 of about the same age that have been found all over Scotland during the past century. 
There are many competing theories about what the stones were used for, but no conclusive answer. Some historians say they might have been fishing weights. Others say that they're projectiles for use in hunting. The lack of flaws or markings on the stones makes both explanations unlikely, though. So the idea that their sacred heirlooms passed on from one generation to another might be closer to the truth. There was a Neolithic settlement nearby at Kata Sand 6,000 years ago, but no balls have ever been found there. The placement of the balls inside the tomb must mean something, but we don't know what. The history of metal casting in Kerala, India goes back centuries. The precise methods used in the metal casting processes here are never written down. Instead, they're passed on verbally from generation to generation. That means the outside world doesn't understand how a lot of its beautiful artifacts were made. Take, for example, the Aranmula Kanadi mirror. It's said that when you look into it, you see yourself as you truly are. That's a mystical way of saying that its front reflection method eliminates the reversal process that happens when you usually look into a mirror. How this has been achieved is unknown. The mirror-making process is another of the region's secrets. Locals say that the mirror was made about 400 years ago inside the Aranmula temple, and it's a sacred object, although how true that is is open to speculation. Replicas of it are still made to this day, all of which have the same properties. Some of them are of better quality than others, but none will ever distort your reflection. The Indian government has granted patent protection to the mirror, so we'll never find out how it's done unless someone breaks with several centuries of tradition and tells us. Just when you think you've seen every possible kind of ancient Egyptian burial tradition, another one appears. In December 2020, archaeologists were surprised to find these so-called conehead Egyptian burials in the ancient city of Amarna. They're thought to be significant because ancient Egyptian art frequently depicts people wearing cone-shaped headgear, but no evidence of any such headgear has ever been found until now. Prior to the discovery, it was generally thought that they were examples of artistic license, much like halos in early Christian art. Now that we know they're real, we have to try to work out what they mean and why they only appear to have been included in burials in this one city. Does the vaguely phallic shape of the cones have something to do with fertility? Might they have been intended to afford the wearer some kind of symbolic protection in the afterlife? The recent increased focus on archaeology in Egypt has given us plenty of information about the way that its ancient citizens went about their lives there. But finds like these remind us that we have still a long way to go in our quest for full knowledge. If you were to visit Abkhazia in the South Caucasus, you'd find hundreds of mysterious ancient dolmens. These dolmens run from here to the Taman Peninsula, and if you counted each one as you passed, you'd be into the thousands by the time you got to the end of the trail. The locals call them Ispun, which translates into English as Dwarf House. That's an accurate description of their appearance, but it can't have been the intended function of the stone structures. Archaeologists say that the dolmens were made during the Bronze Age, starting about 6,000 years ago and finishing about 4,000 years ago. Each structure consists of just one chamber, made from precisely cut stone blocks and then topped with a slab. Each of them has a porthole, but they can be square, rectangular, or round. Some of the dolmens feature petroglyphs, but many of them are blank. Nobody knows who built them, but candidates include the Koban culture of the Great Caucasus Range, the Klinyar culture of the North Caucasus, or the Maikop culture that lived in the West. Not knowing who built them is a pretty big barrier to understanding why they were built. There's a cave in the Yucatan Peninsula that's covered in red and black handprints that were left on the walls around 1,200 years ago, and nobody knows why. It's reasonable to assume that the handprints were left by the Mayans, but beyond that, everything is guesswork. From studying the individual handprints, researchers have concluded that they belong to about 130 different people. The size of the prints might hold a clue. 
It's likely that all of them belong to children between the ages of 10 and 13, the age of puberty. Based on this, a new theory was put forward in May 2021 that proposes that the cave was a focus of ritual activity. The black prints represent the end of childhood, and the red prints celebrate the arrival of adulthood. The ritual activity theory is supported by the fact there's a Saiba tree at the cave's entrance. The Mayans held these trees to be sacred, and so the cave would have been seen as a special place. It's a convincing theory until you consider that there are no other examples of these handprints anywhere else in former Mayan lands. Maybe there are other caves out there waiting to be discovered. Of all the ancient sites in the world, Stonehenge in Wiltshire, England, has been studied more than most. That's why it was a surprise when new discoveries were made there in February 2021. A road tunnel is scheduled to be built close to Stonehenge soon, so archaeologists are surveying the area before the work begins. While doing so, they've located 4,500 years old burial ground and a strange enclosure. The graves are thought to be occupied by the Beaker people, so named because they buried their dead with pottery drinking vessels. The most complete grave is that of a woman who passed away in her 20s and was buried with the usual beaker, but also a copper needle and a shale cylinder that might once have been part of a club or staff. The unusual enclosure the archaeologists found is made up of a series of ditches to the south of the graves. The ditches were created about 1,000 years after the last of the burials, though, and are full of burned flint for reasons that the archaeologists can't even begin to guess at. It's possible that the buried Beaker people were involved in the construction of Stonehenge, but the presence of these younger ditches might indicate that the site was still used for ceremonial purposes several centuries later. We're off to the Dingle Peninsula of County Kerry in Ireland now, where a 3,000-year-old tomb was accidentally discovered by workmen in April 2021. The workmen were carrying out land improvements on a farm when their mechanical digger pulled up a large slab, revealing the tomb beneath it. Archaeologists say that the tomb hadn't previously been disturbed since the day it was sealed. Inside the tomb is a strange oval-shaped stone, the like of which hasn't been found in a burial from this era before. This is a chamber tomb and was probably intended to house several burials, but only one set of human remains was identified inside it. The polished stone was placed directly beside the person who was buried here in what was presumably a significant act. The design of the tomb has striking dissimilarities to other Bronze Age Irish tombs too, including the fact that it's positioned north to south rather than the usual east to west. The presence of the stone and the atypical orientation of the grave imply that there was something special about the person buried inside it, but we'll probably never know what that special something was. In May 2021, Archaeologists in Istanbul, Turkey, excitedly began the process of excavating the historic Hayrapasha train station. They were hoping to find some relatively recent artifacts. Instead, they found something far more ancient. Hidden beneath the station's old waiting platforms is an as yet unidentified ancient structure. Research is ongoing, but at the moment, the experts believe that the structure was built about 2,300 years ago. It's apsidal in form, which implies that it might be an ancient temple but doesn't confirm it. After expanding the dig, archaeologists found coins and pottery from the same era, spread over an area of 350,000 square feet. This was once part of the ancient port city of Chalcedon, also known as the Land of the Blind, on account of the fact that its founders chose to build it here rather than on the stunning Golden Horn Peninsula opposite it that later became Byzantium. Since it was a port city and busy with trade, it could be that the structure was a warehouse rather than a temple. More digging and more research are required before we reach any conclusions, and that process might take up to three years. This mask may or may not be ancient, and may or may not be a hoax. Someone clearly went to a lot of trouble to make it. But did they do so a few decades ago or a few hundred years ago? 
It was allegedly found close to the Iowa River in Marshall County, Iowa, USA in May 2021 and is now in the hands of local antique expert Frank White. Despite his years of experience and extensive connections, he hasn't been able to find any information about it whatsoever. An X-ray diffraction test has revealed it to be made of 99.8% pure copper, which explains why it's so heavy. But its age remains a mystery. People in North America's distant past did have access to copper, but making a mask like this could have been difficult, and there's no obvious reason for anyone to have done so. The remaining 0.2% of the mask's composition is an unknown material, which deepens the mystery. The pre-Columbian Hopewellian culture has been pegged as a possible source of the mask, but the facial features on it look European. The only thing anyone can agree on is that it's a beautiful mask. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.